So, I picked the wrong cow. <laughs> trying to be too somber. She's gone. Massachusetts is gone. She, what? <laughs> I know I have to be more specific. The She's not is, dead. Well, the state. The state's still there. And the cow is not dead. But the cow who came here, who was called Massachusetts, is not with us any longer physically here at our farm. So this is Massachusetts. Our new Guernsey girl. We're so excited she's here. Now let's see how she does with the milk. She was a really great cow. Her production was high, her components were good, so she had nice amounts of cream in her milk. She was a really well-trained show cow. Put a halter on her, she would lead great. Really nice genetics. So for us, picking her initially seemed like she was the perfect cow for our farm. What are you doing? She wasn't the right cow for us. Uh, uh, I don't know. This whole thing's been ongoing for the past few months. We're finally catching up with our videos. So we'll explain to you why. Let's go back a few months. Lovely, my lovely wife. It was a cold winter's day in April. And your lovely wife was looking into getting a new cow breed. Well, that would have been like February. You were, yeah, and you were totally supportive of it. I was. Sometimes you should tell me no, but you know. <laughs> you're, you're very supportive of new things I want to try. And although we have the mini jerseys for milk cows, <laughs> although we already have the mini jerseys for milk cows, you were totally willing to let me try a new breed of cow. Yeah. And what I wanted was more production. I wanted to milk one cow and get a lot of milk. I wanted to feed pigs with it. I wanted to make cheese. I wanted to have cream for butter. So I started looking at different cow breeds, kind of trying to see what we had in our area, what would be available for us to buy as a milk cow. And we found a great Guernsey farm and brought home our first Guernsey from them. She did kick, as you saw in this video. Is that nice. good? Yeah, that video starred me milking her, getting kicked, because I was the only one who was milking Massachusetts. Make sure to put your husband's head closer to put the cow. Put your husband puff. in an unsafe situation but not and you make sure he has a life insurance policy oh yeah for the first actually like month she was here i was doing all the milking we got the cow can kick bar which contained the kicking and that's when it was time for Kay to milk the cow she wanted to get <laughs> right into the first milking that I did with Massachusetts was kind of nerve-wracking because not only was it a new cow who liked to kick, not only was she so big compared to all the other cows I've been milking for the past two years, but I had a new milker to work with that I kind of had to finagle a bit differently than any other milker I've used before. Never successfully used this. One. I've never used this claw. This is a new one for me. I'm gonna try to do what Austin does. Have you ever milked her? No. New cow, new claw. Here I am in our kitchen, like practicing with my claw. You know how to use it now. I do. Trying to get all, hold this all in my hand, one hand. Make sure it's all kinked. Try to get it on the cow one at a time so it doesn't fall off. All the while like watching out for her to kick because although the cow can't kick bar did tame the kicking, she still wanted to kick. So we had it on her right side. She couldn't kick with that right foot, but she could still kick with the left one. And the way her udder was kind of tucked under those back legs, you really had to put your whole body in between her two back legs or access it from the back. So it was kind of a tricky, tricky situation, which meant I was very nervous leading up to it. Now, 
now. First time. And we got it on camera. <laughs> <laughs> You have to be an octopus to do that. I'm like shaking. <laughs> that was good. That was the first time I've failed at this several times already. But she stood great. Mm. The kickstop was kind of like a muzzle for Massachusetts. It was something that we needed to use to get a process done. So you take, if you take your dog to the vet and hates getting its nails trimmed, you can put a muzzle on it. But you don't want to have to muzzle your dog every time you take it outside. We didn't want to have to use the kickstop every time. We want them to be trained to stand nicely to be milked. It is a fantastic tool to have. I will always keep this in my milking room because you're always training somebody I'll be training first time fresheners or cows who are newly in milk who've got all those hormones raging. Honestly, I will be using that kickstop oh, yeah. sadly <laughs> when I am retraining Grasshopper. She's out with the beef cows right now and she thinks she is a wild Highland beef cow. She doesn't want to be anywhere near me and I know she's going to kick me like day one. So yeah, we'll be using that. I was confident that we could train the kicking out of her. A lot of people will have cows show up and just in the adjustment period for a month or two or three, the cow's kicking. Uh, it's not necessarily something that's going to go on forever. Yeah, so her being kind of a kicky cow is a strike against her, but not enough for me to want to trade her out because she still has a lot of nice qualities about her as a cow. But then there was strike two. Second strike against her was she was too dairy. Too dairy for us, which sounds kind of like a crazy thing when you're shopping for a milk cow, getting one from a dairy. Like, of course she's gonna be very dairy. Cows can kind of come in variations. So you get, you have a beef cow, right? They're, they're thick, they're heavy, they're gonna be on grass if you're looking for a grass-fed beef. You get a dairy cow, finer boned, more, they're putting their, their pro, the protein they're getting into their milk. So they're gonna need to eat a lot more, higher protein to produce the milk. Massachusetts was very dairy. She was a big cow who produced a lot of milk. Uh, Sherry said, we picked her out, we brought her home. She said, now remember, she needs to be fed to produce this milk to keep up with her production so she doesn't lose weight, so she doesn't lose her body condition. She looked perfect when she got here. She said, it's gonna feel like she's eating you out of house and home compared to these mini jerseys that you've been feeding. Because the mini jerseys are a smaller cow, got a little bit of beef in them, so they're thicker. They, we always say they stay fat on grass. Oh, boy, they're hard and they're quick. The best way to illustrate a dairy, production dairy, oh boy, you're gonna be a loud one. You can't use this one, too loud. Oh no. There you go. Hold the best way to illustrate a production dairy versus like a homestead, dual purpose, milk cow, meat cow kind of thing, mini jersey. Uh, these two chicks are the same age. This is a Cornish cross that has been bred to be a huge producer of meat. Look at how much bigger it is than this dual purpose yeah, hold egg layer. Side side. Like that? No. Whoa, Whoa we gotcha. gross. So that. gross. Who all over my Chicken food's the worst. You, you get crap. That's the way it is. Welcome to the farm. You can see this Cornish cross is so much bigger, so much faster, but that doesn't come off the same feed, that doesn't come from the same care. A Cornish cross has to be babied, perfect temperatures, perfect surroundings, and high protein feed, lots of it in the right digestible form. Whereas this little dual purpose bird, he doesn't need a 22% protein feed in the beginning like the Cornish cross does. If you don't feed the Cornish cross right, it, it could get sick, weak, it could die. Whereas this guy, he's a lot more hardy, easier to grow, 
So there's a trade-off. It's genetics. The Cornish, the Cornish Cross is a production chicken. Massachusetts was a production dairy cow. She required a lot of input to get a lot of output. But that doesn't mean all Guernseys are going to be similar in the sense that every Guernsey or every dairy cow is going to be a high production, high lots in, lots out kind of cow. You know, with great production comes great responsibility. What voice is that? Uncle Ben. Oh, is that Uncle Ben? It was Uncle Ben. I actually didn't remember who said that. I mean, it was... Uncle Ben's not like... No. He's just an old guy. <laughs> I sound old and wise, don't I? No. Yeah, add that funny bit there somewhere. If you're looking for a family cow, it can be a good idea to go to a local dairy and ask for one of their lower producing cows. They're looking for production, and it's not necessarily what a homesteader is looking for at that level. Even if we thought that's what we wanted, it just, it, it turns out, but her production and what she needed to take in to keep her production and her body condition up just doesn't match the style of management that we do on our homestead. Yep. We tried to adjust as much as we could with what we had available to us. We went and got some chaff hay or alfalfa hay, which is an alfalfa, keep that up. Maybe she was missing home or missing the food they fed her there, but the adjustment was not easy for her. Our goal is to be as grass-fed with our cows as we can be. And we could tell it was going to be hard to do that with Massachusetts. So when I say that was strike two against her, what a perfect thing for a dairy. Massachusetts is great for the dairy, not so great for our homestead. Well, that was strike two against Massachusetts. One of the things that appealed to us about Massachusetts was she was a show cow. She had been very used to being handled. It did make her very, she was very comfortable around people. For me, and in our setup, almost too comfortable. So she was kind of pushy. She's a big cow. Uh, definitely her personality wasn't anything I had been used to and was just another kind of a downside for her on our farm. How do you say that without sounding like, I don't expect her to be like a child to me or a best friend? Personality. Strike three, personality. Yeah, but what does that mean? Um, we okay. have two dogs. Uh, well, I was gonna go to chickens. Like, chickens don't, gonna diss the chicken people here. Chickens, I mean, they have personality and like, look at that crazy chicken. But like, I don't know, maybe a chicken person is going to comment. A chicken no, person is definitely going to comment below. I feel below. like every animal has a personality, right? Some are just sure, more, <laughs> more obvious than others. No. Whoa, oh, we got gotcha. gross. We could diss nobody, surely, if we say that like, a gerbil doesn't have a personality. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure they do. My gerbil. What's an animal that has like? How about one of those um. Yeah. It's a, oh, bear. oh, goldfish. Goldfish. Oh, Don't even start with your goldfish having a personality. You're gonna get. Okay. No, it's not gonna work. The point is, there's a spectrum of personality, right? So to say that a cow has a personality, it's it's not like your kid has a personality. There you go. But also, like, there's the goldfish has some personality, chicken has a little bit more. Dogs have a lot of personality. Cats, I mean, there's a reason why you, like, cat videos are so popular. Everything is proceeding as I have foreseen. <laughs> so with cows, there is a whole range of personalities. Our cows, our herd. I totally have my favorites. Grasshopper is not <laughs> one of them. She is very flighty. She's very nervous. Uh, uncomfortable. You were really nice. I thought you were going to use a lot more mean words about her. You can only edit so much. Now, Luna, 
Luna, she could never breed again, and I think Luna would always be on our farm because Luna and I were, were like buddies. And yes, she's a cow. She's not my child. It's different. But still, our personalities work well together. <laughs> Massachusetts, she had a bond with Renee, who is the girl who worked with her since she was a baby and showed her at the fairs and everything. Like they worked together, you could see it. And Massachusetts, while she was here, was always kind of like, ah, I know, she's a cow. It's very hard to explain. It wasn't the same. She didn't have that same connection with us that she has with Renee. So now's your chance in the comments below. Tell me about your chickens and those whose personalities you love because they're there and our son had one, a chicken who was very dear to his heart, his favorite. Tell us about your gerbils and your goldfish or your <laughs> cows. There are your heart animals, people will say, and there are people who have a heart cow who, even if they've been dead for 20 years, they're still their most loved cow that they've ever had. I had a goldfish named Elvis. Not a lot of personality. Died pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we're talking about cows. But cows. So that for yeah. Massachusetts and us was kind of strike number three. Yeah, you were honestly, and this was the first time this has ever happened, you were uncomfortable with her. And I you was less uncomfortable. I wasn't her buddy, right, but I was it, not she afraid. Wasn't like a she buddy was cow. huge. She was really, really big for us. And I'm a bigger guy than you. Yeah. For you, she was pushy. She was pushy. Very comfortable. Yeah. She had no bubble. Bubble. Her bubble was very small. Being a coming from a dairy, she's used to being handled. Being a show, show cow, yeah. very used to being handled. You, for the first time, were like uneasy around her. That and that can translate. Feeling uneasy around the oh, animal yeah. translates yeah. Um, to them. So you always have to have that confidence around them, and that was very important for me to milk her to spend the time and the weeks milking her myself. Yeah, and that's why Sherry finally said, listen, we're gonna come, we're gonna watch you milk and see if you're doing something wrong, if there's a reason for this, and in case there isn't, we're gonna bring another cow for you to try. And she's got a lot more experience than us. We really respect her opinion. We were like, okay, we'll do it. Let's try it, Sherry. So she did. Yeah. So I got pictures. This is, like so much fun with somebody with this many cows who can just go through their barn and, and they talked with each other and said okay which cow and sending me pictures of cows this is a heifer she hasn't calved yet but she's very calm this is divine she is slow and calm enough to catch so she's going through this whole list of cows ivana ambrosia there's a future app here like where you oh yeah go through cowmatch.com <laughs> and you can swipe left or swipe right <laughs> I would love it. I'd be on there all the time. Yeah, no, don't make that because I will be poor. And then there was Fancy, smaller cow, less production. And I gave her a couple of cows. I said, okay, these two. There was Ambrosia, there was Fancy. Less milk quality, higher components, and a smaller size is a plus for our setup too. <laughs> <laughs> Sherry said, okay. And then they came down to help us figure out what was going on with Massachusetts and to give us another cow to try to milk. Okay, cow number two is on the way. So we've been milking Massachusetts for just about the past almost month, I think. And now we're gonna try milking Fancy today and we'll see how we like her. I like Chewy, she's a beautiful cow and she is easy to work with when you put yeah. the cow can't kick, cow kick stop on her. Yeah, we've really come a long way with her. Massachusetts has adjusted really quickly to our milking setup. Yeah. So I'm hoping if Fancy stays that she will adjust quickly as well. Yeah, we're not sure what we're going to do. We're going to try Fancy on for size. and. Sherry and Dan Ely have been extremely awesome. generous with their time and their cows. And us. Renee. And Renee as well, yeah. Her daughter that's, who we bought. That's Massachusetts mama. Yeah, so if you are looking for a family milk cow and you're interested in a higher producing Guernsey, we can put you in touch with them. All right, they're coming up the driveway.
Cherry and Dan have obviously tons of milking experience, like a lifetime on a dairy, decades. So it was really awesome to have them here to look at our little homestead setup, our milking machine. They did find a couple little kinks in our system. So like this. Hey. I know it's a lot more than you used to. But overall, there wasn't something glaring that was like, oh, this is what you're doing wrong. That's why Massachusetts is kicking. So after we finished with them watching us milk Massachusetts, they brought Fancy out. We brought her in and we milked her and she did great. <laughs> You didn't lift one foot off the ground. But it's first night, so take it with a grain of salt. And then we had the decision to make. I still left the decision up to me, because it was my push present cow. And I decided to give it a chance, and let's, let's take fancy. And Sherry did say, really think about this, figure out what you want. I was like, okay, mom. <laughs> She's very much a mom. I said, okay, let's keep fancy. And we did. Oh. All right, so here's fancy. Right away you'll notice she is not as big as Massachusetts was. Her frame's different. She's not quite so dairy. She's rounder, which is good for us as a homestead. She's not gonna have such high production. She's gonna keep easier. And she actually eats our hay, which Massachusetts would never do. That's, that left two things. How much was she going to kick and what was her personality going to be like? I liked her personality as soon as she got off the trailer. It was very calmer, less reactive to things, so kind of calmer and more... We say with the Highlands, the Highlands react quickly to things, right? If they feel a brush on their back hooves down at the barn, they kick out kick out super fast. Now dairy cows you don't want to be like that because you're working with them every day. You don't want them to have such a nervous panic kind of thing and Fancy is so calm. I really like Fancy. Like, I don't know. Did you say you love a cow? Like in that way I just love this cow. I love her personality. Look, <laughs> she loves to be scratched all over. And her and Luna are best buddies now, hmm. so it's really cute seeing them in the field together. What do you call them? Uh, twins. You know, the Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito twins. This is the Schwarzenegger and poor Luna's the DeVito. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's great. So that leaves, does she kick? I told Sherry, I don't want a pretty cow, I just want one that doesn't kick. Well, I got a pretty cow anyways. And whether she kicked or not was still remain to be seen. Let's go milk and see. And look at this gorgeous udder. Beautiful udder. Now I know how to use this. Twice a day for the last, what is it, three months? going on, when we're teat dipping, when we're post dipping, when the milker's coming out, she doesn't kick. When the milker accidentally Never. fell off. When it accidentally falls off because the hose comes off the milker. <laughs> she doesn't kick. I love this cow. And that 
is not too much to ask when you are dedicating so much time to a family milk cow or any animal on your homestead. I, I want to enjoy working with them if I'm doing it twice a day. I, when I was trying to decide like what was going on with her Massachusetts, how to get her to stop kicking on the family cow forum, one person's advice really stuck with me when they said, life's too short to deal with a kicking cow. There's lots of great, fantastic milk cows out there. And Massachusetts is a great, fantastic milk cow, especially because she went home to the dairy and Sherry said she didn't lift a foot for them. <laughs> so she's doing, a, she's doing great there, giving them lots of milk. And Fancy is doing a fantastic job here, giving us lots of delicious creamy milk. So we have to give Sherry and Dan a huge thanks because they were willing to spend hours and hours, she doesn't like flies there, hours and hours working with us to find the right cow for us and I know they've done this for a lot of other people. If you want to get in contact with them, send us an email, lost at this is home study and we can put you in contact with some great Guernsey breeders, Her heritage Guernsey breeders in Western PA. Now not every kicking cow is a lost cause, just ask Austin when he was dealing with the, the aforementioned grasshopper and how we finally got her to stop kicking through some eh, kind of creative ways. She kicked like a demon and then she stopped. Watch how we did it in this video. With you the sun is shining 24 seven cause when we're together it feels like we're in heaven if it will get